Hello, for this video, we will be talking about special uses of binary variables in our constraints. In the previous video that you watched, I was able to show you how to use or how to define binary variables and use it in the matchmaking problem. And in that problem, I was able to give you a snippet of how to use binary variables and constraints. And let me write one uh, example. In, in one of the constraints there, you have x11 plus x12 plus x13 plus x14 plus x15 equals 1. And as you can see, this is a special technique that we can use to restrict the, the values of, your, the, of the five variables here, x11 until x15, to either be equal to 1, no? one of the variables to be equal to 1, and the rest to be equal to 0. How, did, how does that happen? It, it, it happens because of the fact that your variables are binary variables, and you are getting the sum, and, and, and you are equating the sum to be equal to 1. So how does the dynamic work? Because the variables are 1 or 0, and you're adding all five variables and you're equating the five variables to one then if let's say for example x12 is equal to one then this constraint tells us that the rest has to be equal to zero okay so this is an example of how we use constraints in uh sorry how we use binary variables and constraints to represent certain realities or certain um, constraints in the problem. So now, let me give you five examples of how we use uh, binary variables in, in constraints by giving you this definition of x sub i. <clears throat> x sub i is equal to 1 or 0 or binary where x sub i is equal to 1 if project i is chosen. And in this case, we have six projects and x sub i is 0 otherwise. Now, let us try to come up with a constraint uh, for certain realities in the, in the projects. Let's say for example number 1, let's say project 3 and 5 can only be undertaken or can be chosen simultaneously. So what does that mean? If x3 is equal to 1, then x5 ha has to be also equal to 1. If x3 is equal to 0 or not chosen, then x5 should also be 0. And if you try to understand the dynamics, then it will be easy for you to understand that the constraint will simply look like this. x3 is equal to x sub 5. Okay? As simple as that. Now, for, uh, for example number 2. For example number two, let's say you take project one and four. Let's say for project one and four, you have to choose one and only one, and you cannot choose both. So how do you write a constraint for that? To be able to write a constraint for that, cons uh, for that example, then you take x1 and you add it with x4 and you equate it to one. Why? As I've explained uh, previously, because we know that x1 and x4 are binary variables, then if x1 is 1, then this constraint forces x4 to be equal to 0. If x4 is equal to 1, then this constraint will also will force x1 to be equal to 0. Now, for example number 3, let us say you have the projects 1, 3, 4, and 5, and you have to take 2 of them or you have to choose two of them. So you have x1, you have x3, you have x4, and you have x5, and you want two of them to be chosen. So in this case, all you have to do is equate this to be equal to two. Why? Because remember, each of these variables are binary variables. So by equating the sum to be equal to two, then what are you actually saying? you're actually saying only two of the four variables can be equal to one, and the rest will have to be zero. Now, for example number four, let's say project four can only be chosen if project one and three are chosen. Now, how do you come up with a constraint? 
normally in class, I would ask you to look for it. But because this is in video, let me give you the, the, the answer. x1 plus x3 is greater than or equal to 2x4. Now, how do you know if this constraint is correct? Let me repeat the case. You can only choose x4 if you have chosen x1 and x3. And to be able to know if this constraint is correct, let me show you table of uh, two tables. No? Let me call them the table of valid values. And later on, uh, let me show you the table of invalid values. Now for the valid values, let me just put here x1, x3, and x4. And because these, uh, this is the table for uh, valid values, then what can be the valid values of x1, x3, and x4 given the case? For example, a 0, 0, 0 is valid. Why? Because if you remember the example, the example says you can only choose x4 if you have chosen x1 and x3. Therefore, if you haven't chosen x1 and x3 because x1 and x3 are 0, then x4 can be 0. In the same manner, a 1, 0, 1 is also valid. Ah, sorry. This has to be 0. Why? Because if you've chosen project 1 but you haven't chosen project 3, then it is possible that you don't choose project 4. In the same way, a 0, 1, 0 should also be valid because if you haven't chosen 1 but you've chosen 3, then you should not be able to choose 4. And therefore, 0, 1, 0 should be part of the valid table. A 1, 1, 0 should also be valid. Why? If you've chosen project 1 and you've pro chosen project 3, it is very possible for you not to choose project 4. Why? Because according to the, the, the example, the constraint says you can only choose project 4 if you've chosen 1 and 3. It doesn't say that if you've chosen 1 and 3, you have to choose 4. And therefore, 1, 1, 0 for x1, x3, x4 should be valid. And finally, a 1, 1, 1 should also be valid. Why? Because if you've chosen uh, project 1 and 3, then you can choose project 4. This completes our uh, table of valid values. Now, what about our invalid values? Now, for our invalid values, we still have x1, x3, and x4. And we can just put here the rest of the possibilities. So, for example, a 0, 0, 1 should be invalid. Why? Because you cannot choose 4 if you haven't chosen both 1 and 3. In the same manner, you cannot choose 4 if you've only chosen 1 but not 3. In the same manner, you cannot choose 4 if you've only chosen 3. Okay? And all you have to do is to make sure that this constraint, x1 plus x3 greater than or equal to 2x4, has to conform with the table of valid values and, and if you input the invalid values, then they have to be really invalid. And let's check. 0, 0, 0. So 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to 0 is valid because 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, we check. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. So we, give, we get 1 plus 0 is 1 greater than or equal to 0. 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, this is valid. 0, 1, 0. We get 1 greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, this is valid. 
1, 1, 0. So you have 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, this is valid. And finally, 1, 1, and 1, we get 2 greater than or equal to 2. Therefore, this is valid. Now, on to the invalid table. We have 0, 0, 1, and let's, let's check. If this is 0, and this is 0, and this is 1, we get 0 greater than greater than 2, which is invalid. Therefore, we confirm that this is invalid. 1, 0, 1, we get 1 plus 0 is 1, greater than or equal to x4 is 1, therefore this is 2. 1 is not greater than or equal to 2, therefore this is invalid. And 0, 1, 1, we get 0, 1, and 1, we get the same inequality, 1 greater than or equal to 2, which is invalid. Therefore, we also cross this out. What does this mean? This means that this constraint conforms to the logic that was presented to us a while ago. And what was the logic? The logic can be represented by this table of valid and invalid values. Cut. <clears throat> Now, for example number 5, I will be using example number 4, but I will be revising some of the uh, constraints. What do I mean? In, in, in example number 4, it was stated that you can only choose project number 4. So you can only choose project number 4 if you have chosen project 1 and 3. And because of that statement, you will allow an x4 not chosen if x1 and x3 is chosen. Now, let me revise the, the, the constraint and transfer 110 to the table of invalid values. What do we mean? Let's say we have the same assumption as number 4, except if we have chosen 1 and 3, then it is imperative for us to choose project 4. Which means, if you've chosen 1 and 3, and, choose, uh, and not choosing x4, so x4 equals 0, should be part now of the invalid table. Now, because of that movement, this constraint is now incorrect. Why? Because as you remember, for this constraint, 1, 1, 0 is a check. Okay? Now, for example number 5, let me give you the answer. And the, and the answer actually is composed of two constraints. What are the two constraints? x1 plus x3 greater than or equal to 2x4. So it has the same constraint as number 4. However, we will add x1 plus x3 less than or equal to x4 plus 1. Now, as I have as I've mentioned a while ago, in order to ascertain if these constraints uh, follow the logic prescribed by the, the, the problem, we have to check the table of valid and invalid values. Now, let me label this as constraint 1 and this one as constraint 2. Because we've already checked constraint number one, and we la let, let me label this as constraint number one, okay? Let me now check constraint number two. So we have x1 plus x3 less than or equal to x4 plus one, and we'll check every value. So zero, 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 if we plug in here, we get zero less than or equal to one, so 0 is less than or equal to 1. This is valid. 
one zero zero one zero and zero we get one less than or, or equal to one that's also valid zero one zero so zero one and zero we get one less than or equal to one valid one 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 we get two less than or equal to two that's also valid let's check for the table of invalid values zero zero one zero zero one we get zero less than or equal to two that's valid one zero one so you have one zero and one so that's one less than or equal to two that's valid zero one one we have one less than or equal to two that's still valid and finally one one zero we have two less than or equal to one that's invalid now because writing two constraints in the model is intrinsically an intersection of each other so it's an end therefore we also have to use the end operator here and as you can see one and two are both checked for a table of valid values therefore everything here is valid on the other hand if you look at the table of invalid values um, for each pair uh, of, 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 uh, of validation for constraint 1 and 2, you have one x and one check. And because you're getting the intersection, an x and a check intersected together uh, is, is an x. This is also an x. This is also an x. And finally, this is also an x. Therefore, as you can see, if your intersection of check and check are all checks and these one are x's, therefore, these two constraints represent our example or our constraint in the example number five.